TitleMatchNetwork.com. Mark Calloway was one of those boys that learned how to wrestle in Buzz Sawyer's house. <laughs> and he took Mark's money, you know, and never really gave me any training or anything. And that, that leads to the day that I was in the sportatorium. Bruiser Brody was the booker, like I said before, during this time. And this big, tall, young, freckle faced, red headed guy with a crew cut walk in. And he said, I was trained by Buzz and I, I, you know, I want to wrestle. And Bridger Brody said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of put him off for a couple of weeks, but then he came back and he looked at I remember Bruiser looking at me and winking. He said, okay, Percy. All right, boy, we'll book you tonight. You're going to work with me. And Percy, you go, to, you go to the ring with him as his manager. I get him a mask. So I, I went and found him a mask and put a mask on him and we called him Texas Red. So I went to, to the ring with Texas Red and Frank Brody, Frank Goodish beat this boy all over that sport of country. I mean, broke chairs over him, just beat the dog shit out of him. And if you ask Mark Calloway to this very day, I can pick up the phone right now and hand it to you and call him. And if you ask him about this night, he'll say that the only reason that Bruiser Brody sent me to the ring with him that night was to show him the way back. Because he couldn't have found the way back to the dressing room. That's how big of a beating that he, that he got that night. Wow. Frank broke him in and... Uh, I guess he does something right, because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm prejudiced when it comes to The Undertaker and Mark Calloway because of our history there. But I was his first manager in his first match. Wow. That's a story wow. to him. That's now, great. And who would have ever thought that we'd, we would accomplish what we've accomplished, and we're still such good good friends today. And that was 2006. Wow. And we're talking back in the, in the late 80s. Right. You know? What about some of the early like, characters against Undertaker? <coughs> we had some great runs. Like right? Sid. I said, great one. <laughs> <laughs> you had to say Sid. Yeah. Bless his heart. Huh. Poor old Sid. It, that was okay. I mean, that was, I, you know, I wouldn't compare that to Giant Gonzalez, the Jerome Giant Gonzalez. Oh. <laughs> that was a drizzling fucking diarrhea shit. Giant Gonzalez was horrible. Yeah. Oh, we hated it so bad. <laughs> and we did that blow off in Las Vegas at Caesar's Palace. Oh, yeah. We had the outside show there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were so good that that was over. But then there were so many good ones. The, the believe it or not, the Ultimate Warrior deal. The, that was really we made some money with that, and we carried that all around the world. You know, we done the body bag matches, the casket matches, and just and we never had a problem with Jim. Jake. Uh, Jake. How was Jake? At that Jake. Time? If y'all if y'all have done Jake before, oh, we just did him a three, three weeks a month ago on the road in the car. I, I like to, I like to see that. I, I think the world Jake and I. I I think Jake's got the best interview in, in our business, in our industry. I love the way he just stands there and never raises his voice. That's Jake. And right. I like Jake. And we, we 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 had some good some good stuff with Jake. And Jake's the one that turned his baby face and when we done the angle there. But did you think it was possible? Well, hindsight being twenty twenty, you know, it wasn't. I get the fans wanted this. The fans loved our gimmick. You know, they just loved it. It's like watching a scary movie on TV, you know. You, you like to be scared, you know. So you could see the kids' faces when The Undertaker would come out. And it was all right. new, you know. Yeah. It was just, and they loved that. And the fans made us baby faces. And this, we tried everything we could to be heels. And the fans demanded that we be baby faces. So that's how we ended up doing the angle with Jake and Elizabeth, God rest her soul. Uh, and, and, and became the baby faces that we became. And I always had to work at being a baby. I'm a natural heel. It's so easy to be a heel right. for me. It's just it's so much easier, so much fun. And, and not that I'm I'm, I'm a really a bad guy because I you know I like kids and shit too. But uh, to, to smile all the time and all that shit. Right. You know, some you're so tired. We had a hell of a schedule back in the day, oh, yeah. man. We were on the road. You know, some years 300 days a year. You know, so it, people don't understand how how tiring it is being on the road away from your family and stuff, and you. You come right off the plane and you're tired, but there's the fans there waiting on you, wanting your autographs and your pictures. And you've got to take the time to give back because if it wasn't for the fans, it wouldn't be us. Also, uh, they did the angle with Brian Lee. He came in, he was the, the Undertaker, Undertaker angle. Why do you think that bombed? Because <laughs> it was a shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, Brian Lee is, is uh, the Undertaker, his best friend at, at that time. Right. I, I guess they still are good friends. But at that time, he was his best friend. Brian Lee was uh, his, his best man in his wedding, his first wedding. 
And so they had a, a real connection there. You know, was this after his ECW run or before? It was after. After. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I, I've, you know, I, I never was real too hot on it. it. It was, it was there. It was a little filler there. Right. But we, we had some great shit with uh, Yokozuna. God rest his soul. Some great stuff with him. And, and Kamala as well. All right, all right. Some real fun stuff with Kamala. Where we, we built a couple, we, we did segments every week where we'd be building Kamala's casket. And Kamala, uh, you know, we're going to talk about my history with him. Uh, Kamala, he, he, in fact, we just talked about this a few days ago when he came down to Mobile for one of my shows. He hates being, you know, locked up in the casket, you know. Who, who wants to be locked up in the casket than me? Uh, <laughs> Kamala, uh, he, he's so funny because he's like, I, I ain't getting no casketus. He, would, he wouldn't say casket, he'd say casketus. I ain't getting no casketus. <laughs> so Vince, and his typical Vince humor, you know, as soon as that match was over, Undertaker puts uh, uh, Kamala in the casket, and we nail the lid shut. <laughs> <laughs> Take him to the back of the the, the back behind the stage and just push him back there and leave him there. <laughs> you know, this is a little typical Vince McMahon rib, you know. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> and, and there were so many that we had. And, uh, and then the time with the, the Yokozuna deal when The Undertaker died and rose to heaven. Y'all remember that one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the Royal Rumble in Providence, Rhode Island, I believe. I think it was Royal Rumble. It was like uh, 30 guys beat him up. And open the urn and let the green smoke come out. And I take a rose into heaven. <laughs> then he came back. Are you still here? <laughs> Watching what actually, why do you think uh, Taker's been able to stay on top all these years? I think it, it's the, the constant, ref, you know, renewal of his character. You know, going to the American badass gimmick that he did. He's always changing. You know, for the first five six years. We we done basically the same thing. And then he started doing the, the American Bad. I was with him the first time he got his first tattoo. I never mm-hmm. forget it. it. Was in Las Vegas. It took him eight hours to get that first piece. And then people, they say, "My God, Percy, you've been with the Undertaker for fourteen years. Do you huh. you don't have any tattoos? Well, <laughs> hell, <laughs> yeah. we got an urn here. <laughs> and we got shit here. And we got shit here. Yeah, I got tattoos. <laughs> so you don't see them." But, Hershey Boo, I got pierced nipples, too. You want to see it? <laughs> I'm sorry to Jim Cornette. <laughs> oh, hell! I'm going to get a call off that one, ain't I? <laughs> Do you think uh, Taker takes the business too serious? Some people say that. I don't know how true it is. Yeah, well, I don't know if he takes it too seriously, but my God, he's made such a fantastic living at it, and, and he's made such a name for himself. Uh, he ta- it's a business, and he treats it as a business. And uh, th- the business has changed so much. It's it's not like it was when we first started in the WWF with that gimmick, you know, 14 years ago. Well, 15 years now for him. He just celebrated his 15th anniversary this past November at Survivor Series. I mean, who can say that they've been with that company for 15 years and straight? On top. Nobody. All right. Nobody. Hogan. Nobody. Nobody's done it. Doesn't he have the WrestleMania never been defeated? Never been defeated. And uh, we shall see what happens this coming week. You know. Why is that? Is he a good politicker, do you think? Or well, just... uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, uh, the loyalty uh, and his friendship w- with the family. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and he does a good job. He, he's box office. You know, He puts asses in seats. Right. And uh, it's a combination of everything. And he's such a fantastic guy, you know. Uh, I'm certainly not. Asking, I don't have to kiss ass anymore. I'm about way past that point. I never was asked kiss anyway, and I'm sure not doing it today. But he's a tremendous uh, family man and, and, and friend and human being. And uh, I mean, you can sit with him. He can be here, right here with us, and we'd be just having just as much fun as we're having right now. TitleMatchNetwork.com.